Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Introducing the Fisher Effect In this video we are going to look at the Fisher Equation and this equation shows us the relationship in an economy between three different things and the three things that we're going to look at here is number one the money supply in the economy and that is represented by MS. Number two, the second determinant in the economy is inflation, represented by the pi symbol here. And number three is the interest rate, represented by I. So the Fisher equation shows the relationship between these three fundamental variables in the economy. Now, what it shows is a one-to-one -one adjustment of I, the nominal interest rate, to inflation. So what we mean here is, as inflation increases by, let's say, 1%, so too does the nominal interest rate I. We can represent this in shorthand through an equation where we have small i, nominal interest rate, is equal to... So the nominal interest rate, and this is in time period T, which is the, in the current time period. So this is equal to R in time period T, and R is the real interest rate. This is the interest rate adjusted for inflation in T, time period T, current, plus inflation rate in time period T, so the current inflation rate. So this equation, again, is relating these three key variables together. Now, what we can say in this case here is that inflation, the figure on the right-hand side, is determined by the quantity theory of money, which we've seen in a previous video. And what this says is when the money supply increases in the economy, this causes inflation to increase in the economy. So inflation is driven by the money supply. Now, if we look over at the other variable, or the real interest rate, this is determined outside of the quantity theory of money. And it's determined by the demand and supply of loanable funds, of credit in the economy. So this is independently derived by the supply and demand within this market, which means that when we look at the equation, if the real interest rate is determined independently and doesn't tend to change, well then any increase in the inflation rate due to money supply causes an increase in the interest rate. Now, in the long run, what we see is that this change in the money supply due to the quantity theory of money, we see that it has no impact. So it is not equal to, it has no impact on the real interest rate. So this is called mon uh, money neutrality. So changes in money supply don't impact on the real interest rate. Instead, it's determined by the loanable funds market. Now, if this is to be the case that money supply doesn't impact on the real interest rate, it then must be driving inflation. So what we must see here is that when money supply changes, when it increases, this increases the inflation rate and through the Fisher effect, because there's no impact on the real interest rate, what occurs is the real interest rate stays the same and it is the nominal interest rate that increases. So increases in inflation and the money supply cause increases directly in the nominal interest rate. So that tells us that in the long run, money supply is the major cause and determinant of inflation and increases in the nominal interest rate as well. Now, if we move on from that, we can take a few examples of this in real terms. So what we can use is we can say that let's say five is the nominal interest rate in the economy. This equals three, the real interest rate, plus, for example, two for inflation. So what we say here is in 2019, we had real interest rate of three, inflation of two, and that gave us a nominal interest rate of five. Now, what would happen if the inflation rate went up from 2% up to 4% in 2020. Well, the Fisher effect allows us to work out this. So the real interest rate is still three. Now the inflation rate has moved up to four. So if we add 
these together we get seven so it allows us to work out the nominal interest rate after changes in inflation so once inflation increases so too directly as a one for one does the nominal interest rate now we can adjust the fisher equation to make it in terms of the real interest rate or and the real interest rate is driven to a large degree by the money supply by the availability of loanable funds in the economy as we mentioned before the real interest rate is a measure of the real cost of borrowing for investment purposes for example so investment in capital and this relates into monetary policy because the money supply is controlled by the central bank and this in turn causes changes in inflation which in turn can cause changes in the cost of borrowing so if we are to take an example of this what we are going to do is rearrange the fisher equation so that we have r the real interest rate at time period t on the left hand side we now bring inflation or the nominal interest rate over to the right so what happens here is it is it nominal interest rate in time period t and we take away the inflation rate from this so the fisher equation now becomes an equation for the real interest rate r is equal to i minus inflation now if we go back to our example in 2020 where the inflation rate rose from 2% up to 4%. We can see here that the real interest rate 3 is equal to nominal 7% minus the 4%. So real interest rate is nominal interest minus the inflation rate, so minus inflation. So when inflation grows, what tends to happen is the real cost of borrowing money tends to decrease. And this is why inflation at moderate levels is quite good for an economy, because as it rises, it reduces the real cost of borrowing money. As it went up to 4% here, the real cost of borrowing went from 5 to 3 now we can also take a different example here so we can say what would happen if inflation which was at four percent in 2020 what if this dropped down to deflation and in our case here in 2020 what would happen if it became minus two percent so minus two percent is deflation well our equation would become seven percent in terms of nominal interest rate and the equation says we minus inflation well inflation is minus two percent so we minus minus two percent now what we know is that minus by a minus is a plus so what actually happens here is it becomes seven plus two percent and seven plus two percent is nine percent so this is the real cost of borrowing for investment purposes it increases when there's deflation in the economy so deflation is bad in terms of an economy with increased debt levels for governments corporations or households because it raises the real cost of debt it raises the real interest rate in this case here it's raised up to nine percent so we added on the two i hope you call back to cultnomics soon bye for now